Welcome brothers and sisters. Welcome to an exciting video of Triple Grace. My name is Michael. I'm the founder of Triple Grace and the Righteous Pass Movement Foundation. And over the weekend, I have received downloads of a fantastic issue that clears up so many things. Here we are not talking about, about uh, physics. We are not talking about what the world tries to explain with it. We are not talking about all this boring stuff. Here we are looking at the perspective of God. Here we see what God is doing, what the hand of God is doing. The title of this exciting video is The End Times, The Bending of Time. Same place, different times. Brothers and sisters, before I enter into the explanation what I have received, what explains the end times and what is going to happen, and that explains so many places in the Bible, formerly not being understood, before we enter into that, you need to have some basics. So let me go and show you some simple drawings that will introduce you to the basics of God's hand at play. Brothers and sisters, same place but different time, the hand of God. In the first image we see what happened during the seal tribulation. All the process that you see now in this image, there are three different time periods. They are all about the end times. Because what happens at the end times? At the end times, heaven will merge with the earth. When you see that heaven will merge from the earth, you will see in the middle a place created. When heaven comes this way and earth is here, then heaven pushes over the earth and creates a certain place, a certain area. And this is the bulwark, the safe haven, the place of protection where God is taking us to protect us from any harm of the enemy or anything that will happen on earth. Heaven will start now to move over the earth. You have to look like this. Heaven will be on top and earth will be down. And with every more movement of heaven going over the earth, in this direction, moving like this, and we know that the world is filled with sin, sin will be pushed more and more and more into a smaller space until it will disappear. Do we see that in the end times? Yes, we see it. Because at the end, when we have the new heaven and new earth, sin is eradicated. So, But now, here in the first image, we are talking about the seal tribulation period. Heaven just started now, starts now to move over the earth. And it creates the first places of protection, the first bulwarks, where heaven and earth is meeting together, where actually heaven is brought down onto the earth. These places are our holy places. These are our holy places during the seal tribulation. Heaven will come from the end, from the future. The earth is in the present. Two time periods, two different time periods will merge and converge with one another. The future on top of the present. This is what you call bending of time. Let me continue so that I make it clearer for you. This is a seal tribulation. Now, if we come to the, the time of Mount Zion, the sixth seal, and we go into the trumpet tribulation, 
you see already that heaven has gone more over the earth and has created a much greater place of protection, a much greater area of influence, a much greater holy place, a much greater bulwark. And we also see that in the scripture, we see this is the time of the 144,000 who are working in much greater power than we will walk during the seal tribulation. Why do they walk in much greater power? Because there is much more influence of the heavens now over the earth. And then, at the end, when everything is done, even after the millennium period, when everything is done, the heavens is completely covering the earth. The bulwark covers the earth. This is the new heaven and new earth. And that is the future. That is the future. from where heaven is coming now in bending of time to merge and converge with the earth. So let me clarify it for you again. We have here a bending of time. Same place, but different time periods. Heaven is coming from the future, from the state of new heaven and new earth. The time will be bent over and it will connect, merge and converge together with the earth at the present time. By doing so, it will create a safe zone, a bulwark, a protection, a holy place, where heaven will be brought down onto the earth, where there is the interaction here in the middle, where the heaven and earth will interact together. This is also the same the same principle that applies to everything in the Bible, applies to every holy place, to every interaction with God and earth. If we look at the, at the interaction with God and Moses, the burning bush incident, this is the same thing. Heaven came from the future, bended time over the earth, over that place, where Moses was and God could speak. God could speak to Moses. This was a bending of time. God has not come down from the earth, but it's a bending of time. It is the same place, the same place now and in the future. The father was standing in the same place as Moses, only not in his time, but in the future. And now when he bends the future time over to converge and merge with the earth at the present time of Moses, then they are coming together. Then they were standing on holy ground together and they could interact and could talk with one another. So this is seal period, but it will grow because because heaven is moving this, this way. He is moving this way over the earth. Heaven on top, earth down. Move over, here over. And then the bulwark, the holy places, the influence of heaven on earth will grow. And we see that in the scripture, Mount Zion will come down. In the trumpet period, the 144,000 have much more greater power than the end time apostles of the seal tribulation. And then new heaven and new earth when everything is covered. Then we have reached the future from where in the sealed tribulation heaven is coming to merge and converge with the earth. I hope you, you get the principles because this is the basics now. And then let me return now to the image to give you better understanding and some examples. Wait, let me see. Yeah, like that. So, brothers and sisters, now I'm back. Here you see the golden one is the, is the heavens that came from the future and is hovering, merging, converging over the present time that you see down in blue. This is the earth. It will come together at, a, at the same place but it will be a different time. 
And another principle is that because heaven comes from the future, whoever comes with this bending of time can interact with the presence. But the earth cannot reach out from alone to reach the future, because the future has not happened yet. I hope I make myself clear. It is not as so easy as it thinks, but just have a look at this one. If you look now, look, so, so the heaven, we have this one, and now then the heaven is coming over and moving over the earth from the future, and this is the present the earth. It's moving over until it has covered everything. And then we have new heaven and new earth. Let me give you an example from the scripture. Have you not always asked yourself, how was it possible that the three young men who were in the fiery furnace in Babylon were not burned? It's written that there was an, another figure was be seen in the fire. And then we all assume it was a miracle of protection. But actually what was happening was bending of time, God's hand in play. And the three young men and the angels, yes, they were in that same place as a fire. It was a fiery furnace, it was the same place, but it was not the same time. The, the three young men and the angels were standing in that place when the, when the furnace was cold. Maybe even a few hours before, a few hours in the, in the future, when it was cold. They were not at the same time in the furnace as the fire was put on. So that's the reason why they were not burned or, and nothing were harmed. And when it was over and the fire was reduced, then they were brought back into the right time and came out of the furnace unharmed. Bending of time. We already talked about uh, Moses and the burning bush experience. The same thing. And there are many other examples in the Bible that you can find where it will also fit together. God, God's hand at play. God is bending that time. The future will come to merge and converge with the present. This is happening on, in every holy place. Another example, the tabernacle. The tabernacle, the tent of meeting where Moses was talking to God. How was he able to talk to God, not going up the mountain where God was residing there with, when he came down on Mount Sinai, but he was talking to him in the tent of meeting. Same principle. Bending of time. God, was, God came to the same place where Moses was, but it was not the same time. And so they were able to talk, the same like the burning bush experience. That also explains the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant could be something that creates such bending of time. It explains also why the Ark of the Covenant could be taken by the enemy. Because it was not used correctly by the Israelites. They thought, oh, the Ark of the Covenant alone will make it. They had no, no understanding. So they used it in their own way. And God was not there, so the bending of time had not taken place. So they took the Ark of the Covenant, they went into battle, they lost, and the Ark was stolen. Because there was no bending of time, and there was no assistance, and no help from God. And they were, were, were punished for it. But when the Ark of the Covenant were used in the destruction of God, then the bending of time had taken place, Helpers, maybe myriads of angels were standing by. You see it when they moved around with the ark around Jericho. Jericho wall came down. Then you see it in crossing, crossing the Jordan, the water, the parting and everything like that is because the power of God 
from the future was available at this time, through the bending of time. But as soon as it, the worldly people, the one in the present, try to use the Ark of the Covenant on their own, without bending of time, without God having authorized it and used it, they lost the Ark of the Covenant to the enemy and they lost the battle. Many things in the Bible can be explained by this. What about Daniel in the lion's den? He was thrown into the den, the lions were there. It was the same place. But immediately when Daniel was there, he was removed in time to in maybe even half an hour in the future. So the lions were not reacting on him because nobody was there. It was the same place, but not the same time. Daniel was in the same place, but maybe two hours ahead. And so at this time the lions were not anymore in the den, but maybe in their cages. You see, he was taken out of time to protect him. That's a bending of time. Of course there are some principles applying to this bending of time. For example, we in the present now cannot go into the future because the future has not happened. But God and his angels or what he sent, the saints or anything he sent with the bending of time can reach to the present because they are coming from the future and the present has already happened. So they can interact. Voices and talking is no problem between the two different time zones. That's possible. That can connect together when the merchant converge. But a person, a person from earth cannot, cannot reach by themselves to the future time frame. But the one who comes from the future and converges and merges over the present time can reach down and can visit the other place. And it's also possible that, that this person from the future then can bring the person from the presence into the bulwark. And in the bulwark then it will be able to travel through time to get to different places. We see that at the story of John the Bab John the Revelator and on Patmos. There he was having the same experience. Bending of time, an angel came to him and he was taken into the bulwark, into the place of protection, into the holy place. And then they traveled in time to see everything what he has written down in the book of Revelation. And then he brought, brought, was brought back and placed out of the bulwark into his own time place and the bending of time stopped and ended. What our people, our scientists are trying to explain in a boring way is actually the hand of God. And we see it throughout the whole scriptures from the beginning until the end. We see that this is happening. Now let us come to the escape of the innocent, the children of the a under the age of accountability. What will actually happen? Will there really be heaven open and they will be thrown in a swoop up to the heavens? In a way, yes, because the future time will always be on top. Heaven will always be on top on earth when it comes to, to uh, merge and converge. Always. So you will move actually to the heavens. You will move you will move upwards. As you see here in the image, the golden part is the heavens and the blue part is the earth. So when you get a connection and go to the golden part, then you will move upwards to heaven. But in reality it is the same place, only a different time. So now let us come to the escape of the children. The chi the abandoning of time will take place. The angels will come at the place where the children are. 
They will reach out, take the children into the bulwark. Immediately when then the bending of time will stop, the children will vanish. But at, in that moment, in that moment, the children are still in the same place they were before, only now in a different time. And what time will that be? The time of new heaven and new earth. The time when the third heaven, when new Jerusalem has come down onto the earth. So the children will go to the heavens. They will go to the third heaven. They will be with the Father. And it's absolutely true. We will not see the children before before they come back, before we, in our timeline, will reach new heaven and new earth in the future. But, and now it comes, but there will be a possibility to connect through a bending of time and to talk to the children. Or maybe even see them. Such principles are not yet opened for me and I have not received any download about that how this will work. I hope you understand now what I'm talking here about. I'm talking about a merging and converge of heaven with earth. The end times are starting now and we see this merging and converge and the first beginning of these bulwark places, these places of protection are our holy places. There a bending of time will take place and there we will be able to walk in the presence of God like it was for, 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 for Moses in the, with the burning bush on holy ground because there was a merge between heaven and earth and this will also be in our holy places. Then it will become greater and bigger and Mount Zion will come down and the 144,000 will get power and then it, the heavens will push completely over the earth and cover it and it, then we will have the new heaven and new earth at the end. Or everything in the book of Revelation will be fulfilled. So it will be possible now for the heavens to interact with us here on earth and we will have much more visions, much more encounters and miracles will happen in these bulwark places, in these holy places, in these places of protection. God can protect us as he has protected Daniel in the lion's den, as he has protected the three young men in the furnace. He can do that and he's doing that. Therefore he is coming over now because the end times are also the time of trouble, disasters and judgments. And so he is creating places where he can protect his children. And that place will become greater and greater. And when you see the movement, when you see the movement, no, like this, when you see the movement from the heavens over the earth, then sin will be pushed out more and more and more until the time of the great white throne judgment and sin will be eradicated. And heavens will cover the whole earth. This is a description and the explanation of the end times from God's perspective. And he is using his power, his hand, to bend time and to come with us together. To Now this, this is a physical manifestation. It is the same place but a different time. But a connection together, it is a physical manifestation. It's not anymore the spiritual one, but a physical manifestation. A scene in the tent of meeting with Moses, a scene in the lion's den, as seen in the burning furnace, as seen in the in the burning bush experience, and many, many, many more. God is the ruler of the universe, it's the ruler of heaven, the ruler of earth, the creator of everything. He is the master of time. He can bend time and bring heaven and earth together. Not we, we cannot do. But we can lay the groundwork by saying, okay Lord, we here are establishing for you a holy place. 
where, sorry, where now you can come and bend the time together, where you can now come and merge with the earth together. And these are our holy places. This is what we are creating. Possible places where heaven can and will com uh, merge and converge together with the earth. Where we will have access to the heavens and to the angels and to God himself. There where he can talk with us like he did with Moses, the burning bush experience. Because also there the Lord said, remove your shoes and sandals because you are standing on holy ground. I hope you are understanding now what is coming. Great power is coming. Heaven will, will merge and converge with the earth. Same place but different time. This will also explain the vanishing of the people in the escape. Yes, they are not vanishing from the places, they are just vanishing from the time. The same what happened to Daniel in the lion's den, what happened to the, the man in the furnace. And most likely also the same explanation is there for Elijah in his ascension. And the same explanation is for Elijah running faster than the chariot to be in another place. And then of course, if this is possible for places in different times, then it also must be possible for a person in different times. But this seems to be something where you get problems now. Because if you can go back or forth to other time periods, it might come to an interference. What God has shown me is only about place and time. Why has he shown me this? Because it's important for the holy places to get an understanding what it means to stand in the bulwark of God. This is not something spiritual. This is actually a physical manifested connection place, a merge and converge with heaven and earth. This is what a holy place, a bulwark is. And there you can receive all the blessing because there is a connection. There you can receive all the blessing and everything can be given to you. Instructions, blessings, gifts, wonders and miracles will follow you there. And we are preparing these places. We do not know if every holy place will become such a place, such a bulwark. But at least we are preparing the places and say, Lord, here is another holy place that we have sanctified and consecrated for you so that you can come and merge and converge with it. So that we can stand in your midst and can receive your instructions. The powerful hand of God is shown in this. And it explains everything that you read in the Bible. There is nothing not being able to be explained to this. Send me anything that cannot be explained by this bending of time. And I will give you a clarification, an explanation to what God has shown me, that this is possible. It's definitely not working in the same way as our scientists think, because they are without God. But God knows how to do that, because he is the creator and the master of time. And when we remember that now we are in the process of the end times, we see now heaven merging over, over and converging over the earth, then we see that there must be places that we call the bulwark. That also explains the 40 days of Jesus Christ physical here on earth. That is the bulwark time, 40 days of a bulwark. Heaven will converge over the, the earth and God, can, God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, can manifest to different people at different places. Bending of time. The hand of God. Not the scientist. The hand of God. Same place, but different times. Brothers and sisters, I hope I get you excited. What is coming? What is coming to this world? What is coming to this earth? 
get excited. Heaven is now merging and converging over a fallen world. And we will be able, and I pray that all of us will be able, to stand in the bulwark in the holy places, to have a direct connection with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, to get all the instructions we need so that we, so that we can be perfect end-time apostles, that we can walk in the image of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I would be the first one to say, yes, Lord, please allow me to have that connection. Allow me to bend time over me so that we can talk right away, not only once in a while, but every day. So that you can give me the instruction what to do, that you can guide me to the people I have to go to, that I can bring the people together that need to be brought together, that I can create this community, this family community of heaven, of like-minded people, that they can come together, have everything in one accord, all in common, that they share their resources, and that they start to live for your kingdom. This is a dress rehearsal, brothers and sisters. This is now the dress rehearsal of the new heaven and new earth, brothers and sisters. So fantastic. When I received it, I first thought, Lord, nobody will believe me. But then he said, bring it forth. The time is here. They need to get an understanding. The holy places are not just imagination places. They are not just places that you have created, Michael. These are my places, my bulwarks, my places where I will con converge and merge with the earth where I will have direct contact, a physical manifestation with my end-time apostles. So bring it forth. Show it to them. Let them have the understanding that my hand is at work and that I will bring everything together. I am declaring the end from the beginning. A restoration of all things. What will be the end future and the end of the book of Revelation? A new creation, as it was in Genesis, in the beginning, it will be in the end. But in the end, it will all be perfect. Sin is re eradicated, Satan is deleted, there will be no problem anymore, and it will be perfect. And from this perfect time, God will come and bend over present times bend over the holy places and will connect with you. There the escape of the children will be brought to, to that new heaven, new earth. There will always be a connection between people in the same place but different times. If God will allow this, it is God who is doing it. Not a scientist, not anybody in a laboratory, it is God who is bending the time. It is God who comes together with his people. He has done it many times throughout the scriptures, and you can see it. Everything that was not explainable until today is now being explained with the bending of time. Many people have made a lot of articles and studies about this incident with the burning furnace, but nobody has said this has happened. This is the truth, brothers and sisters. This happened. God removed the three young men from the time frame so that they were not standing in the fire, but in a cold furnace. And when the fire was off, they were returned to their time and they came out and they were not harmed. God bended the time for their protection and he will do it again in the bulwark places where heaven and earth will, will merge together and converge together. And these are the holy places. A great and fantastic understanding and download from the Lord. God's hand. The end times. The bending of time. Same place. Different times. If you have questions about that, please send them to me at triplegrace55 at gmail.com so that I can answer you or put them in the comments so that we can find a solution for it. There are many, many questions open. For example, if it applies to places, can it also be applied to persons? Same person, different times. Can it? Will it be done? 
I do not know. I only know about places in different times. I only know about the holy places. I only know about the bulwarks. I only know that it was time to get an explanation for everything what is not yet explained in the scripture. Because we are in the end times and we see now heaven coming down onto the earth. And a merging and converge will take place. There's definitely open questions. How will be the interaction be built? Will it be possible that, that you can go there and return? I do not know. But what we know already is that not only the, uh, a voice communication can take place, but we also see incidents in the scriptures where angels will come. For example, when an angel came to Daniel to talk to him, that was also the hand of God in bending time. So they could come together. And there was a holy place created. And when the holy place was created, then heaven and earth merged together. And there an angel came out and or or better, Daniel was taken into the bulwark where the angel was. And so he got the instruction face to face with the angel. I do not want to take away from you anything about miracles, anything about supernatural experience. Is that not supernatural? Is not that the hand of God? Is that not a miracle? I have zero idea about any of the physics. This was one of my worst subjects in school, physics. And now the Lord is bringing me to this understanding here. He is always using vessels that cannot believe that they are used, because I have zero idea about physics. But I know, I understand that this has something to do with the physics. But it's the hand of God. Brothers and sisters, get the understanding that we are in amazing times, that the end times will be filled with miracles and wonders, and that God will come forth because this is a time now when He will come and merge and converge with the earth because he wants to take back dominion. The restoration of all things is in progress. Thank you that you were here. Listen to it several times. Write your questions down. Send them to me. Put them in the comment box. Let us discuss about it. This is what God has shown. I cannot explain anything to you about in the, in the physics or in a laboratory or in an experiment. I cannot. I can only guide you to the places where it, where it was applied in the scripture. Like the furnace, like the lion's den, like the place of the burning bush and many other places. And it will be applied again in our holy places. Will all holy places receive a bulwark? I do not know. Maybe only the ones who are set up correctly and perfect and the ones who, who will be consecrated and not desecrated by walking with shoes on it. And So these places definitely will receive a bulwark, a connection with heaven. And there you will walk on holy ground in the presence of the Father and he will instruct you as Moses received an instruction at the burning bush on holy ground and you need to remove your shoes and sandals so that you not desecrate this place because then a bulwark will not be established oh brothers and sisters what a fantastic download what a fantastic information that god has given us right now why is it so important to establish the holy places because they are the first bulwarks on earth and that will grow then, and when it becomes bigger, it will become Mount Zion, it's a sixth seal. And then in the trumpets, 144,000 walking in bigger power, because the bulwark has become much bigger. And then at the end, after the Millennium Kingdom, when Satan is completely defeated, then what do we see? The heavens, new heaven, new earth. Heaven will have covered the whole earth. Sin is eradicated, and we will have a perfect place. Brothers and sisters, listen to it again. I will make another one to explain something more. But please, do not 
discard it or throw it out right away. Pray over it. Get the understanding from the Father what he is doing right now. Do not get the understanding from the world. Do not try to seek and explain it through the physics. Do not try to seek and explain it through what people have made in public letters or, or examinations or whatever in, in, in the world. Even not if they are Nobel Prize winner. Worldly honors are not important for the kingdom of heaven. But look at it through the eyes of God. When you understand that heaven is on top and earth is down, then you know that God is looking from the top to the down. And then you see that God is coming onto the earth. And that explains all the physical manifestation, everything what we see written in the scriptures over time. That also explains completely the end times and the book of Revelation until the end of new heaven and new earth. Be blessed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Have a great day in the Lord. Maranat.